You want to know a really cool thing that I found? It's this picture right here. Now this picture is depicting three Spider-Men on top of the Statue of Liberty. At the end of this mock series, I want to be able to recreate this photo using minifigures and a giant Lego statue. But as you know, you can't just go jumping into something like that. You need a plan. But hey, that's exactly what this video is for. And why don't you guys come along for the ride? Now the idea is simple. We want to draw what we want to create, giving us a rough idea on where to start. Now you've seen me do this before with other series where we've taken a drawing and turned it into a blueprint for us to follow throughout the series. Not necessarily worrying about scale or detail, just getting a concept of what we want to make. You've seen me do this with other series. We did it with the Daily Bugle and we did it with the Civil War Airport mock. Only this time, we're working on a much bigger scale. At least, I hope to be. Now, like most Marvel fans, I've been obsessed with No Way Home, and with a film so packed full of details, it's hard to not get excited for. And although there are many mocks I could build from this film, I want this to be based on the last scene of that film, where every character is fighting upon the Statue of Liberty. This scene is just the most detailed out of them all, and I feel like we've got so much interpretation for story elements with our minifigures. So now I know what I want to do, and what scene I want to create. And as we're basing this off of concept art, I thought it only right to do an episode directly inspired from this concept art and do some concept art of our own. Now I'm going to start off with an idea that I had a concept for a long while ago, and I'm hoping that it looks good on some paper, but we'll see how it goes. Now I do like this, however I've just blatantly taken the Apocalypseburg Statue of Liberty and tried to create some form of bust with it. And although using something like the Apocalypseburg would be considered, I reckon, easier, I don't think I want to take that as an option. When people think of the Tommy C. Bricks channel, they think of the Daily Bugle, they think of the Civil War airport battle. Stuff like that and something like this are just not in the same calibre, if you ask me. I think the Apocalypseburg Statue of Liberty is very good and could easily work in a situation like this. If I'm honest, I think the biggest problem is just the scale. I don't think it'll be big enough. I don't think that the Statue of Liberty, compared to the minifigure in the Apocalypseburg set, will give off the right look that I want to get. So although I think this idea would work, I think we're going to go back to the drawing board and see what else we can do. Now I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but this series currently doesn't have a sponsor. But what I will say is I've made some pretty awesome merch to go along with this series. I'm calling it the Liberty Collection, and the reason I use collection is because you can rep your favourite Spider-Man. These shirts and prints inspired by the three suits means you can rep your favourite webhead and fund this project at the same time. Currently all my instructions over on my website is helping towards this project as well, so anything you buy over there means you're helping out this project. Even members who get exclusive content every week now can now use these as emojis in the sidebar in the premieres, so you can rep your favourite Spider-Man just in the chat. The quality of these shirts are impeccable. I handpicked the shirts and the paper that these went on to make sure you guys got a fantastic quality product. So head to the first link in the description where you can pick some of this stuff up, or you can directly donate to this project using a GoFundMe link, which is also in the description. This way, if you don't really care about any of the merch and you just want to give directly to this project, you can. We're already on 180 quid as of recording this video, and there are some cool surprises and things planned depending on how far up the goal we get. If you if you guys want to support the project, head to the description. You'll find everything down there from my link to my website, my PO box, and hell, if you're a business and you feel like you can help in some way, my business email is also listed in the description. Thanks to everybody that's currently donated to the project. Whether you're a member, whether you've donated via the link in the description, or whether you've bought merch, thanks to everybody that's donated to the project in some form. You guys are honestly the one getting this project out faster for everybody to watch. And hey, if you want to be like these awesome people, head to the links in the description and pick up something today. Now this is more what I envisioned me doing, if I'm totally honest. However, I do have some pros and cons with it. Let's talk about the pros first. Of course, it's going to be the right size. 
if I make something along these sort of lines, I think if I'm honest, I would be happy with the outcome. The only issue I see is that this isn't a lot of space for putting multiple minifigs. The thing I liked about the Apocalypseburg one is it just had all that space to play around with. It had the arm which was upright and you could put a bunch of minifigures surrounding this in scaffolding, which I really liked about the Apocalypseburg one, which you just don't get the same sort of feel for with this newer one. I think I need to bring some of that back and almost combine this one with the Apocalypseburg one. I think it needs to just be much bigger in general. And I think we can do that. I think it just needs a little bit more of a tweak. I've only just realized that what I'm doing is completely wrong. I wanna go back to something I said in my previous series where I talked about Giant Man and the reason that I made him look like a minifig. But I still think these are the most iconic pieces of Lego. Meaning if we take a normal minifigure and we make him giant, it's not all of a sudden going to make normal human proportions. What I was basically saying there is minifigures are some of the best part of Lego. And if you made a minifig bigger, all of a sudden it wouldn't grow human proportions. So it wouldn't have a regular sized body like the Statue of Liberty. If minifigures really did build this thing, it would look like a minifigure. And like I say, we've done this before with things like Giant Man. All we need to do is work out how to make this thing even bigger. <laughs> And with that knowledge in hand, everything started to fall into place. All of a sudden, the statue was looking how I wanted it to look. The minifig's proportions really selling what I wanted it to look like. And then adding the extra details, like the crane, just to help sell the scale and maybe even add something like lighting to this model. And let's not forget what I want to do with the scaffolding. I basically roughly positioned where I wanted it to be, just so I know when I come to build scaffolding where I need it roughly to be. Now, of course, I think there'll be some bricks for reinforcement, but this will allow spots for us to put minifigures. Not just the ones from No Way Home, but the extra ones, like Ned and MJ, Doctor Strange. Maybe even include some bystanders to try and give a bit more life to the mock, but I'm sure we'll cover all of those in some minifig episodes later on down the line. And let's not forget about doing the mock in this kind of way. The scale is going to be huge. Now, although I've done a bit of rough math to try and work out how tall this is going to be, I do think it will look great when we come to displaying this model at either a convention or just in general, and rival Summit like the Daily Bugle for not only size, but also piece count. Now that the line work's complete, I can see a clear vision. I can see things that I didn't even think about putting in before, like putting things like a Daily Bugle helicopter flying around the head, or maybe this crane introducing more spots to put minifigures. And due to this, we can do things like the shield down below, which by the way, is now based on a minifig shield. I think that would be one of the coolest things to take on first, especially if we wanna do things like Tom Holland versus Green Goblin. I think that could be a really cool video just in itself. Now, the only thing I think it needs now is a tiny bit of color. I think the colour is one of those really controversial decisions with this mock, considering it's the Statue of Liberty and we've always seen it as that kind of greeny colour that's really recognisable pretty much any time you see the statue. But the thing is this film did lay out the groundworks for the statue being restored. This means that not only is there going to be scaffolding everywhere, but the statue itself is going back to the copper colour it originally was when it was first built. This was to put on the Captain America shield, which again, we're going to include as part of this mock series. So I think the final model will end up being a brownie copper colour. Now I don't know what brick we're going to use yet, we're going to discuss that in later episodes, but for now I think I'm happy settling on the copper, as I want to be more accurate to the film. And coming up on the home straight here, I think this artwork truly does depict what I want to do with this model and can't wait to get started. So here we have it, my concept for the No Way Home build. Might I just say, I think this is gonna turn out a lot bigger than something like the Daily Bugle. And although I can't quite comprehend how big this is going to be at the moment, I'm also super excited. Although this drawing and the composition of the model is somewhat done, I still think there's loads of calculating to do to try and make this statue as minifig scale as possible. Then there's working out how to build something like this 
in 3D, then in practicality. So I really hope you turn that subscribe button grey by now. You're clearly interested in the content. I'm curious to see what kind of a spike we can get off this video anyway. This series is going to be incredibly long, and the two main reasons to do it is that one, this model is not going to be cheap, and two, there's going to be a lot of content for you guys to watch. I'm painfully aware that this series was incredibly delayed, but I'm really glad that you guys have stuck through, and I hope you guys are as hyped now as you were for it five weeks ago. Believe me when I say I've been working on this project for a grand total of like four months now. And with your guys' support, especially on that GoFundMe and merch, we will get this model built and I look forward to sharing every single moment with you guys. Now all I have to do is build everything in studio. And how hard can that be? Right? Ugh.